Hello, it's Robert Miner with Dynamic Traders Group with this week's short video that we do for our YouTube followers and subscribers and our Twitter followers. So this is where I do a short video on one or two markets that might have a good trade setup coming up in the week ahead. Um, today, I'm going to take a look at the dollar and at the euro. And we're going to do a deep dive in the long-term position uh, of these markets, as well as the immediate position, because I think there's a good trade coming up here uh, next week. So before I begin, real quick, I want to tell you about a webinar I'm doing next week. Next week, I'm doing a webinar for the Money Show Virtual uh, Expo. I'm doing it on November 2nd. I think it's at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's all free. And I think it's two, two days of a lot of speakers that will be doing webinars on different subjects. I think you'll find that in my webinar, it's uh, not, a, not an infomercial to sell you something. It's going to be hardcore education. I pack a lot of information in that 45 or 50 minute webinar. So if you want to check it out, if you want to register for free, there's a link right below in the comments below where you can uh, register for that webinar. And again, it's absolutely free. So doesn't hurt to register, and maybe there'll be some other speakers you'll have interest in, but I know you're going to have interest in what I say. Okay, that's it. Let's get started and take a look at the dollar. This is the dollar index monthly data going all the way back to 2008, and this is uh, an Elliott Wave count, and I'm showing this, uh, even if you're not familiar with Elliott Wave, and I suspect most of you are if you're listening to this video, is, boy, this is a textbook count. I'm going to bring it right up to date through the day I'm recording this, November 4th. But if we go back to 2008, uh, we had a basic one, two, three, four, and we're in a wave five more than likely. So what's important about this, that if this is a correct, is if this is correct, and if we're in a wave five of the count up from 2008, when this wave five is complete, which should be the last section before a correction, probably greater in time and price than any correction since the 2008 low, that means we should be fairly close to a, a top in the dollar that would last not just a few months, but probably several years. So that might be some information you'd be interested in. Now, that doesn't mean the top is in. You know, notice in this last section, we'll take a look at this on the weekly and then the daily data in just a minute. Um, and when we're looking at uh, monthly bars, uh, we could be, you know, plus or minus a few months. We'll see in a minute why I don't think the top is in, and I think we're going to have a new high. But more than likely, by next year, uh, the dollar will complete this longer term structure or cycle, however you want to call it, and complete a top that's going to last a few years. Now, that's something that you might want to be prepared for and aware of that may be occurring before too long. Let's go to the weekly data. So this is a weekly data just coming up from the January uh, 2021 low, which I had labeled that wave four. If indeed this is a wave five, that means when this section and this trend is complete, the much higher time frame multi-year trend is complete. Let's look at it coming up from here. This is just a really short Elliott wave lesson when we have to look at time and price in relationship to a particular wave count. Coming up from the January low, there was an advance into the April high and then a distinct correction lasting several weeks into the May low. I've got that labeled as a one or a two. Now going all the way up into last September's high, just last month or about five weeks ago, is we can see all of these corrections were much less in time and price than what I have labeled this wave two correction. We call that corrections of a lesser degree. They're subdivisions within this trend. So that's why I think as of this point in time anyway, is that the dollar index has not completed the four and the five. We should have a wave four correction that is typically around equal to in time and price of the wave two, if not greater, longer in time and greater in price. So these are definitely do not meet that criteria. So more than likely, they are not of a comparable degree 
as uh, the, what I got labeled a wave two. So more than likely, the September high is what we call a wave three. And this decline since September is a correction. That's a really important piece of information to have itself because if this decline is a correction, and if we can identify it as a correction, then when the correction is complete, whenever that might be, uh, the dollar index should then continue to a new high. So let's take a look at the daily data. So this is the dollar index daily data. I don't have any of the wave counts coming up off of this. I guess I should put this one in. That was what we had as the wave three, the September high on the monthly and the weekly charts. So what we're looking at, if it's correct that this is a probable wave three high, the decline off of this wave three should be a corrective type wave structure. If it is a correction, well, it's at least a correction of one degree or another. And as we've shown, it's more than likely that higher time frame wave four, when the wave four is complete, the dollar then should continue to in a wave five to a new high. And if that occurs, what we know is it's probably the last weekly trend before that much higher time frame multi-year trend is complete. Wow, really important piece of information. Two things we're going to look at here, bring us right up to date. This is data as of the afternoon on November 4th, 2022. Number one, uh, let's take a look at this decline. So we had a, what I've got labeled in A, decline, correction, decline to a new closing low, but then the market turned right around to trade in to the uh, range of this, uh, or excuse me, this initial decline. This is called an overlap it's a characteristic of a corrective structure. Whatever that correction might end up being, here's what we know as of today, November 4th. More than likely, and keep in mind, as you know, if you've watched many of these videos, I use probable, <laughs> probability, more than likely, because we never know for sure. But if we're using a particular kind of technical analysis, we have to make decisions based on that technical analysis. So as I say, coming off of the November high, more than likely, this is a correction and not the beginnings of an impulsive bear trend. What happens when a correction is over, the trend before the correction resumes to a new extreme. So I'm not saying by any means that it's over. I don't think it's over. It probably has a little ways to go before we complete that higher time frame wave four correction, which itself should be two or three months anyway. We're only about a month or so into it. But this closing overlap is uh, a, a significant characteristic of a correction, not an impulse. So where are we at right now? As of Friday, the daily momentum is going to make a bear reversal. Looks like today is going to be a pretty sharp down day. So let's look at what else do I have on this chart. Just for the last few months, the CPI, Consumer Price Indexes, back in July, it was one day before the significant multi-week high. When was the next CPI announcement? The day of that multi-week low. When was the next CPI announcement? The day of this corrective low followed by resumption of the bull trend. When was the next announcement? The exact day of the October 13th high that completed a correction followed by a trend to a new low. So here we are coming into the CPI announcement next Friday. What a beautiful time to have completed a short-term high here at the Fed announcement and then a resumption of the decline into the end of next week. And that's what the uh, daily momentum cycle is also indicating. So boy, what a fantastic opportunity this may be. So this isn't a forecast, but it's identifying conditions with a high probability income for a possible trade setup lasting a few days, maybe even a few weeks. So more than likely, I would look at if the dollar continued sideways to down, particularly if it made a new low this coming week and the daily momentum cycle reached oversold, boy, I'm going to be on alert for a setup to consider a long trade that would last probably at several days, if not longer. So right now I'm looking at short positions. 
in the dollar, long positions in the euro, just for the next few days, just for this next daily momentum cycle. So what's this level? This is the 100% alternate price projections of what I got labeled the wave A and the wave C. If the dollar should decline into that zone, into the end of next week, and the daily momentum get oversold, that would be my uh, ideal letter to the trading gods for the setup on the long side. That's what I want you to be prepared for. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I know that for right now, I want to be oriented for short-term trades over the next few days on the short side of the dollar, long side of the euro. And then if the dollar is sideways to down into the end of next week, I'm going to be looking for an opportunity to go long. Well, that's it for today. Everybody take care. Check out the money show, the link below that you can register absolutely for free. And I hope you join me November 10th at my webinar there. Where I'll be giving you a lot of good information. That's it. Take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Robert Miner over and out for now.